Welcome everyone to Milan. We're playing Milan in the Champions League. That's right, everybody. We've got our Champions League group. It's a bit of a group of death. We've already played one game, which we drew 2-2. Now, we've also had some real success in the league, which is important because the next game after the game against Milan is against Real Madrid. Let's get into what we're calling a tactical expedition. <laughs> That's right everyone, it's time for what we are calling, as I said, a tactical expedition. If you're new to the series, welcome. What we're aiming to do is basically take a journey through creating a tactic, which may seem a little bit atypical, a bit out there. Um, attempting to almost see if we can trick, break the game, I guess, um, by utilising some more progressive defensive roles, I guess you could say. Um, in a bid to try and trick the game. There are certain aspects of the game which they don't always pick up on, as if you've watched any of Zealand's episodes, you'll notice that runs from midfield don't always seem to get picked up, if at all. Um, and um, also, you know, previously people were breaking the game by sticking keepers up for corners because the AI was not programmed to mark keepers. Um, so we're going to see if the AI will effectively pick up on playmaking defenders, essentially. So that is, that is the premise of the tactic. And we're just going to evolve it as we go through this one season that we're doing here with Barcelona. And see if we can make it into something which seems to generate some real success. Um, and yeah, take it from there, really. If, if everything goes as semi-planned as we want, then I will then run a simulation test with a few teams um across the divisions and see how well it works with them um yeah if you're also new to the channel hello <laughs> welcome uh yeah my name's tj90 or tom if you want to just call me that that's fine because that is my name um yeah so i think without further ado let's look at the results and how we've been playing the last time i saw you was that humiliating opening day defeat away to sociedad we then played celta vigo at home and uh we went one nil down early doors and then managed to turn it around to 2-1 which then um, ended up being 2 all just on the stroke of half-time, and that is how it stayed. We then noticed we had two back-to-back -back wins against Osasuna and Elche. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, and then in terms of other league results, we've had a 0-0 draw away to Rayo Vallecano. Very frustrating game. A 3-0 win at home to Getafe, and then a, a one all draw away at Betis, which probably isn't a terrible result in you know, early days on this sort of tactic journey giving the players time to adjust you know we'll, we'll allow some of that the leipzig game though is the one i want to show you because that was really quite interesting um we played incredibly well and i think it's fair to say that we were well and truly fm'd before i show you the stats uh before i show you the goals sorry i'll show you the stats so as you could i mean you'll look and think well what are you talking about yeah Leipzig didn't have many shots, but they had, you know, a decent XG compared to yours when you consider the amount of shots and stuff we had compared to them. What you have to look at, though, is that their second goal came from a penalty. Now, what you have to remember is with penalties is they have a exceedingly high XG. So one penalty has the XG of something like 0.8, I think, is the, is the statistics, if I can get my words out. 0.7 to 0.8, I believe, is the statistic XG on a penalty. Um, you'll notice that Adama Traore scored an own goal and it is one of the more bizarre own goals I've seen of late on Football Manager. And yeah, sorry if you're new, but if you've been here before, you'll know we're using 2D to help assess player positioning for this. So, first goal was a lovely little uh, bit of build-up play between Pedri and Memphis, leading to Aubameyang tapping in a rebound. And then here we have the own goal. Now, I will put this into normal view so you can actually really see what happens here because let's try it on sideline so leipzig work it out klosterman crosses it in and triore lets the ball run past him before then hitting it with his left foot into the goal i don't really know how he managed that um and then i'm gonna leave this in um 3d as well to do it justice, Nico with an unbelievable effort, absolute screamer, puts two on up, and then Shabazz Lai with Leipzig's only shot on target in the game from the penalty spot, 
Now you will look and think, oh, what are you talking about? You have 44% possession, they have 56. They did nothing with it. They literally did nothing with it. Our defense just completely and utterly smothered them. Um, honestly, so this is kind of the shape we are getting with this tactic. So it's essentially like a 3 4 2 1 is what we are seeing happen when it plays out. Um, so on paper, it looks very, very defensive, I guess, because it's like a 5 1, def one defensive mid. What is it like a 5 1 2 1? one two or something or two two one i can't remember off the top of my head but yeah it, it's it's really quite you know it looks really defensive but it actually ends up being quite offensive almost i mean yes the wing backs don't get quite as far forward as you would typically see but overall it actually ends up looking a bit more attacking than it does on paper um if we look at players um the young is kind of obviously realistically we're wanting him to be our sort of wild card really so you'll see his heat map obviously a lot of the ball in and around his box but he does seem to push forwards quite a bit and we are noticing that as the players are getting used to the tactic um he is getting more and more involved slightly further up because he is finding that space if you look at his uh, overall average possession um he is sort of sitting around about just inside the center circle with the ball, he's almost on the halfway line now. And without the ball, he's just slightly on the edge of that sort of D on that center circle. And then if we look at possession, Frankie de Jong, what's that? Gained possession eight times, lost possession three times. And what's that? Touches 59. So he's not having as much of an influence as, say, someone like Garcia, seemingly. But Garcia is losing the ball more. But I think that is probably because when we look at Garcia's average position... In the role he is playing, um, I don't want you. Um, he generally is drifting out wider in that wide centre back role. And then when we look at his heat map for Eric Garcia, he spends a lot more time here. Um, and at this sort of area, obviously, he's trying to play the ball through four, maybe five, six opposition players to find someone. So it's easier for him to lose the ball because he's playing a lot more crosses, which have a much higher risk of being intercepted. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else we've done. I think the only other change that we've really made is this, is the pie and Gavi um, making these more like set number 10s. That is kind of what we're sticking with now. And since Pedri has come back, although he's currently injured, is he going to be fit for this game? No. Um, he is. He has been playing in that role as well. We left Nico as the Carolero for now. He means he stays fairly central. He doesn't drift too much. And we've got Traore and Balde as the complete wing backs with Busquets still being the anchor man. Now, I don't know whether to change that, to change him to that maybe, so he's a bit more central, um, just so he's not getting pulled away. We'll try that and see how he does in this. But otherwise, we're just going to leave that as it is, I think. Now, having just said that, I am actually going to do something that I did think of the other day. Um, it's been a while since I recorded the last episode. I've had a few things to do for FM Scout and the FM Network and a few other things to sort out. Um, this is something I did think of is actually uh, playing Ferran as a false nine. Um, because, don't get me wrong, he's, he's a two-star false nine, but he's only a two-and-a-half-star advance forward, which is, obviously I don't use wingers in this. So... His passing, flair, and vision and technique, I would hope, will lend him to be maybe being a useful link between Depay as the Trek and Aubameyang as the advance forward. Um, and the other thing I was also thinking, reason for doing this was, it might just throw Milan off if they're not expecting us to play two strikers. So yeah, what can we do here against Milan, who lost their first game in the Champions League? I'm pretty sure we got Man City as well as the other team. I, uh, oh, 2D. I uh, realised I forgot to actually go into who the uh, the other team was after Leipzig and Milan. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's Man City. The reason we're doing 2D, everyone, if like I said, if you're if you're new to this series, is uh, I'm using it to yeah sorry Man City there we go I'm using it to assess better the positions that the players are taking up in game, um, to see what sort of options they have on the ball. So say like right now, 
And pause, let me look, Baldes here. Look, De Jong is the libero, is now almost sitting about 40 yards from goal. With uh, Araujo, who's actually the ball-playing defender, supposedly on cover, so he's really pushing forward, and he's already been booked after three minutes. We do not want him getting sent off. We've got Busquets just there. Albert just sitting on, he's slightly offside, just sitting on the corner of his art to Mori. With uh, Ferran just in behind, uh, well, it's sitting in front of Kier. With the pie just holding off, is that Brahim yet yeah, or Brahim Diaz with Nico occupying a real nice space there? So, if we can somehow work the ball into Nico, he would have a really good opportunity to try and bend one into the corner because Magnon is really pulled over to that side. And then we've got Traore bombing down the wing. I would expect him to end up pretty much in the box in the next two to three seconds, to be honest with you. So, let's see if that plays out the way we think. Okay. Traore did not continue to make that run, but it's come to De Jong, who's managed to push himself that little bit higher up the pitch. And Depay has had a shot, and Depay has scored. Assist by Frankie De Jong. De Jong taking up that position higher up. And, uh, yeah, lovely turn and finish by, uh, by Depay. Bear in mind, everyone, De Jong there in that position, he is the libero. So he is actually a centre-half and he is taking up a playmaking role there, which is exactly what we're looking to see with this tactic. Well cut out by Araujo, feeds it to Ferran. Oh, it'd be interesting to see what he does as a false nine, because that could be a really good option for us going forward. Oh, come on, Alba, you should have been making a lovely little turn on the ball by Nico. If I think if Alba had made a much more progressive run, um, and he wasn't quite so slow on his bike, I think Nico would have probably found him then. It's interesting, though. I'm playing Depay as a... As a oh. Stegen dropping the ball, I think. Let's see. That's terrible goalkeeping. Yeah, terrible goalkeeping. Really not happy with that. And inside eight minutes, it's one all. Um, yeah, playing the, even playing Depay as a Trek Artistic, he does seem to still drop back quite a lot. Now, generally speaking, the Trek Artistic is supposed to sit... Pretty much in between the lines, between defence and midfield. So whether he is adjusting his his position based on the opposition's defensive and midfield lines, even when they're in possession, which is kind of not what I expected. I expected the Trek artist to be someone who kind of just holds that role, um, which is something that he seems to be a bit more flexible in doing. Now, the way I understand a Trek artist differs from an unconch based on the player instruction, like the role instructions, is that an unconch kind of just sits centrally, whereas the Trek artist like drifts across the lines. Um, and Triore has picked up some sort of knock, I'm assuming. See, like, don't get me wrong, the pie made a, a really good tackle there. So, you know, tracking backwise, that worked really well, but it's just not what I, uh, what I necessarily expected from the role. What has, what has Triore done then? Looks like he's just given everything. So what was he knackered before the game and I just didn't notice? Well, I don't think I really have anyone on the bench who could replace him. Could maybe put... Maybe do something with Jordi Alba, maybe. Because Roberto's injured and Dest is still injured. But it's interesting to see now if we pause it. Number 11 and number 30, that's Balde, and that is Traore sitting up, up alongside. Basically, this is now a 3-3-4, three, a three, three, almost now, with us building the ball out from the back. Um, so, you know, you can see these are defenders, everyone. These are defenders. Admittedly, they're complete wing-backs, but they are still playing a defensive role as the game would deem it. Or as you would necessarily think of it, you know, you think of wing back at first and you think, oh, defender. But obviously what like the likes of Conte did at Chelsea with the likes of Victor Moses and uh, Marcus Alonso, even though they were playing as <sighs> theoretical defenders, they were such an attacking outlet. And you can see they're playing these players 
as complete wing backs, so defenders with an attacking duty, um, they they are very very will have the potential to be very very influential in an attack. Which I'm sure most of you who play football manager will know. You know if you've used complete wing backs and stuff before, which I'm sure a lot of you have. That is something that you will be aware of. Um, but I just find it really interesting just to see it quite so black and white like that when you're looking at it in a 2D view. And yes, I have noticed that elsewhere Man City are beating Leipzig, which leaves us second, although it would be nice to have a bit more daylight between us and Milan. And oh, you know what? I've been paying so much attention to the 2D gameplay that I've just realised that Milan are absolutely dominating us in terms of XG. Absolutely dominating us. I made two changes. I brought on Jordi Albert for the Naka Traore and I put Balde out on the right um, wing back role, but he's got a really, really weak right foot. So I played him as a inverted wing back on support. Um, and, and I've also dropped Ferran into the Trek Artista role alongside Depay, who I've put to an engonch. Um, it may seem like I'm just being like, like going against the grain for the sake of it. I actually think he was offside, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it was, um, in using these atypical roles. But the, the reason why is because I'm, I want to, I've never really used them. So I kind of want to see how well they work. Um, and I want to see if it's, some, if they can be made to work. Now that was just poor running from, uh, Garcia, not following Rebic then. But yeah, the reason why I brought, I dropped Ferran a little bit deeper is to see if it helps us with our build up play and construction of moves, um, in and around the box because i was wondering is that why we're struggling with the, with uh creating chances in xg because obviously our goal came from an incredibly low xg uh chance um so i thought if i do that we might be able to construct some more moves but we'll have to see we will have to see and leipzig have equalized against man city memphis is knackered we made a few subs Brought on Gavi for Memphis. Antu Fati has come on for Albamian because having a poor game. And we've also brought on Langley just to freshen up in defence. Because Araujo was tired and booked. And this is really not going how I expected it to go. I think I'm wrong, we're playing against a very good calibre team. But I'd seen enough in the last few games to think that you know, maybe there was uh, there was something going here. It makes me nervous for uh, the Classico. What we have done is we put Gavi on as a advanced playmaker, and I'm going to put Ferran on as a shadow striker because I love a shadow striker. I don't know what like I, I don't know what it is, but maybe it is just Latan just being an absolute beast. He's just winning everything from those corners. Now, all I do with this save, by the way, everyone, is just to tweak, 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 and change. Oh, dropping Gavi a bit deeper gives a bit more of the ball because we've literally we've created no real chances in this half either. It's been a very toothless performance. There's definitely a bit of a uh, setback, to say the least, based on recent performances. Ferran is having a poor game. I have already had to find Ferran, I think, once. Or no, I've warned him because his performance has been very subpar. Well, that is... That is just a very well-worked goal, but that is some really poor defending. Really poor. Sergio having a poor game. Albert coming on, having a shocker. Teo just absolutely bombing down. Sergio nowhere near. And Florenzi coming in from that right-back role, getting ahead of everyone. Oh, no, coming in from that right-wing role, sorry. But still, just absolutely screaming through. Bratislava giving Zenit an absolute game there. Three all. 
And we now need a massive result against uh, Man City. Because after being, I think it's fair to say, slightly robbed against Leipzig, we've really fallen flat here. Ansu's well offside. What are you doing? So many players are knackered as well. Is it a particularly? It's a. It's relatively high intensity, but it could be a lot. It's not like a full-on Gagan press. That was a very disappointing game and not helped at all by some really terrible performances. So everyone, for the Clasico here against Madrid, we are going with the, uh, the two number 10s. Jordi Alba has come in for Balde. And uh, we've just made a change to go for a, like a slower tempo, a lower tempo, and see if that helps in our build-up play. Um, just, I noticed, looking towards the end of that game against Milan, we seem to be trying to play a lot of quick balls, which obviously is kind of what we want the lads to do. You know, we want to try and catch teams out, but if the cohesion's not quite right yet and players aren't quite in the right positions, and also it does help lower the intensity of the tactic a little bit, maybe it'll just help us retain possession a little bit better. So everyone, massive, massive game, massive game. Our recent run of form, last five games, does not necessarily make for pretty reading. Three draws... Uh, a win and a loss but equally what's important to notice is that uh, Madrid are literally just one point uh, one place ahead of us in the table so it's not been all plain sailing for them either so I'll be looking to see if the lads can show you today what they've been showing me uh, in the last few games prior to that run of draws Madrid pinging the ball around quite quickly here, seem quite happy just to uh, build from the back when needed. Eden Hazard getting a rare start here for Madrid, cutting inside Jordi Alba, forcing the save from Stegen. He seemed to just completely ghost off Alba then. Crows with the corner, what can we do? Can we get rid of it? Get rid of it, get rid of it. To Stegen comes and claims ahead of Militao, that's fine. That is fine. Now, I will be looking for much better chance creation in this game, needless to say. Well blocked there. Gavi plays it forward. Albert, uh, try, he flicks the ball on, but he just can't quite then get his feet going. Who's going to get there? Oh, Nico, Albert. Back to Memphis. Come on, Alba. He should be making... He should be... As soon as he's played that ball off as an advanced forward, he should be on his bike trying to break the lines. Memphis! Yes! 1-0. Memphis to pie again. Inside three minutes. Well, inside four. Much like against Milan. No, no, no. He was not offside. Not a chance. Not a chance. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, you... Ugh.
Everyone seems happy. <laughs> and overall, seems to be having fairly good games. Lowest rating is Memphis and Adama on a 6.5. Come on, Adama. Yes. 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 Come on. Crosses it in. Albert nods it back across goal. Near post, mate. At the near post. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, that was close. Oh, he's well off. I'm sorry, but Benthamar is so offside. Eric, down to a dot. Yes, into the box. Drive into the box. Now play the ball in. Oh, man. Yes, Frankie. Yeah. So, I can't remember if I mentioned last time, Frankie has the trait to play a simple passing game, which when he's got a passing of, like, 16 and a vision of, like, 17 or something, I think. Yeah, vision of 18, sorry. Passing and technique of 16 seems such a waste. So, he is currently learning to not play short, simple passes with a view to uh, being taught the killer long balls trait. Or killer through balls, I should say. But yeah, that is what we're aiming for with Frankie. Basically, for him just to use that passing ability, just to ping that ball around the pitch. That's a lovely pass by Garvey, cutting out uh, Azard for Alba there. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a great pass by Frankie. So that's what we want him to be doing all the time. We're just starting, we're maybe just starting to uh, get a bit more confidence in the ball as this game's going on. Although we have just lost it, but can Nico win it back? No, yeah, bit too forceful on Valverde. It's like a typical nervy derby. It's a game of few real chances. Yes, thank you, Eric. Memphis flicks it on. Memphis is not having a, the greatest of games, actually, now it looks like. 6.4 rating. I would like him to be doing better. C minus, see me after class, Memphis. Come on. Gone past you far too easily there. He's offside. No, nah, he's offside. Did not. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say something even good to VAR. I I thought he was offside. Yeah, yeah. Notice how I saw that straight away, but didn't see it with ours. Bias for you. He is. He is. Yeah, miles off. How the lino didn't give that is beyond me. You wanted to press Nacho. I think that's probably fair. He's he's having quite a bit of joy. Now, Pedri might well be ready for a bit of action. He's not fully fit, but I think we bring him on. And you know what? I'm going to bring on Ansu. Not been impressed with Ferran. I did find him. And I'm sorry, I'm not bringing Baldi on for a Dharma. Not a chance. Oh, come on, Frankie. That was not good enough. You know what? I'm going to brave it and we're going to go attacking. Okay, now I back that one. That's fine. We'll do that. But I'm not. I wasn't going to bring off a. Uh... Oh, he's injured. Twisted knee. Six minutes. Is this going to just peter out into nothing? No! Oh, thank heavens that was Mariano and not Benzema.
Is he playing? Is it? You know what? Why? Oh, that's what I meant to check. I meant to change that. Not that it'll have, you know, see, but he's offside. Not that it'll necessarily make a massive change, but I realised when I set this up, I didn't actually, I realised this the other day, I was listening to the um, football manager show and they were talking about goalkeepers and I realised I've never actually set to stag in to be in a uh, sweeper keeper. Or I, di I, I didn't think I had. And yeah, sweeper keeper on attack is definitely the way to go. That is, um, you know what? After the game against Milan, I was expecting that to be a lot worse. So yeah, I put the Stegen on a sweeper keeper on attack just because I think if we're pushing De Jong up, we might as well push the keeper up as well. And what is quite interesting to see as well is uh, after that game now, the amount of cohesion lines we've got amongst some of the players, which hopefully bodes really, really well for us going forwards. Um, incidentally enough, even after that draw, we are still actually only three points off uh, Athletic Club Bilbao top of the table. So even though we're sat in eighth, we're only three points off. Who have we got next? Levante, and then we've got ugh, Man City. So in terms of league games, we've got a fairly decent run. Athletic Club obviously currently sitting top of the league, but hopefully we can get a win there. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring it back for the home game against Man City. Hopefully we've managed to build up a bit of run, got a favourable result at the Etihad, and hopefully we can then try and scrap our way through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. So I'll see you for the Man City game, everyone. Um, I've been TJ90. Hope you find this interesting. Like I said, it's just... In the first episode, I say it's just a little break from what I often do with the Let's Play series. It's literally just more of a tactical journey rather than just doing a straight out tactics test where we just load a tactic in, put some players in positions and sim a season. We're actually just playing the season out with this one. Although when I get to a point where um, I feel the tactic maybe is starting to gel and it doesn't need as much tweaking, I will probably like holiday a month or two, or, you know, here and there just to get things moving. But um yeah, if you've got any thoughts below, feel free to drop them. If you're enjoying it and you want to see me do more of this stuff, again, leave a comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button just so I know that people who are coming and watching it are enjoying it and are sticking with it. Um, yeah, take care, everyone. Um, and I hope you all have a, a, you know, a lovely day, evening, wherever you are. It's Friday night where I am, so if you're, if you're watching this at a similar point in the week, enjoy your weekend. Take care, everyone, and I shall see you soon. Bye.